I wanted to make a review on the X-T30, but honestly, I'm too infatuated with it to be completely fair. So if you're looking for a hard review, spec sheet, don't buy this camera without watching this sort of video, then leave me be. The X-T30 is the sort of camera that is truly special. It's such a perfect balance of simple, but still powerful and professional. I mean, just look at this thing. What a marvel of technology, design, and to some extent, affordability. Looks-wise, the camera is just beautiful. It's simple and clean. It keeps unnecessary lines and bulges in its shape to a minimum. The retro silver look may not be for everyone, but even if you get it in black, it's still at its core a sleek body. Like it's something that transcends just being a tool. I mean, if you bring this thing everywhere with you to shoot, then it can become a part of your look if you want it to. Not to be materialistic, but it's just iconic. I mean, I even keep the thing on my desk at home as a decoration when I'm not using it. Even things like the controls are also streamlined to their advantage. It has what you need and just a bit extra. You got the top dials, but also front and rear wheels if you prefer those. Then after that, there's the focus joystick and a few buttons you can customize. Something like the X-H1 or X-T3 do have more controls and buttons, like they literally have dials within their dials, which is cool and all. But this is a very boiled down design. Uh, it feels like there was more careful thought put into what is necessary and what is not both in the looks and, again, the functionality. It's great because on the surface, it's all simple, but if you want, you can dive in and get fancy with things. You can pick what each wheel and button does if you really want to. I know some people just want endless customizable buttons and controls for everything, but honestly, how much is too much before it just becomes distracting or overcomplicated? I feel like this is just a good balance. And hey, not everyone buying this camera is going to be a pro right off the bat. I do recommend everyone learns their exposure rules and techniques and all that, but if this is your first camera and you just need some way to shoot with it, then there's even an auto switch which will overwrite everything for you. Now purists are going to say shoot manual or nothing, and I do shoot manual a lot, but very often I actually just find myself picking my ISO based on how bright it is, and then selecting my aperture on the lowest f-stop, and then finally putting the shutter speed to auto. This means that my shot is always automatically exposed, but if I want something brighter or darker, then I simply just turn the exposure dial. Super quick and easy. And yeah, sometimes I'll adjust my ISO if needed, or change the aperture, um, but Sometimes when you just want that one quick shot before it's gone, this keeps you from fumbling around and missing it. Now, when you translate this whole camera's design to actually going out and shooting, well, you get one of my favorite photo experiences. If you're gonna use this camera for photos, I really feel like the move is primes. You may be more limited than with a zoom lens, but the primes just feel more natural on it. Even something like the 56 1.2, though big, still pairs well, and the 35mm 1.4 or 2 just feels right proportionally. If you go with stuff like this, I feel like your shots will come out better, you'll have more aperture range, and you'll be more in tune with shooting to each focal length's advantage versus just seeing a shot somewhere and mindlessly zooming to get it in frame. Honestly, one thing I want to do is pick up either the 18mm f2 or the 27mm f2.8. They're both pretty cheap used, and they're just as ridiculously small as this camera. I mean, they're about the size of this little film lens I have. Now, they may not be the fastest or nicest lenses, but with that setup, I could fit this camera in my coat pocket and just have it whenever I'm out. Like, it wouldn't be for when you're going out specifically for a shoot or trying to get some masterpiece necessarily, but just when you want to capture little moments throughout your day. And it's a huge part of why I love this camera so much. It's so small and portable, you can easily just toss it in your pocket, your bag, or just over your shoulder, and it's not going to wear you out all day. And when you have a camera on you at all times, I 
just feel like you appreciate some things more. Um, you kind of just notice how some light hits things in a certain way or just how some little moments feel like movie scenes. And even if you're not doing that, you're still going to be able to photograph little things to help document your life. Um, I feel like cameras are really expensive things, but if you use it as much as you can use something like this, then when you have all these photos and videos to look back on years later, I, I feel like you're not going to regret it. I just really enjoy it. And I'll be honest, I haven't had the camera too long to have taken a ton of photos on it. I've been doing more video lately. But I have shot with the Fuji brand long enough to know that the image quality is great. Honestly, when it comes to image quality, it depends more on the lenses and the skill and style of the photographer more than the actual camera itself. Um, so as long as you're not cheaping out on lenses and you know what you're doing, I feel like you're not going to have any trouble getting good images out of this. It's the reason why my 2013 X-E2 still takes pictures just as good as my X-H1 or even this X-T30. Though the resolution may be different and there may be some slight technical variations, the lenses and my style outweigh that. I mean, can you really tell a difference here? This shot was taken with all three cameras with the same lens. Now video wise, video is a huge part of what I do. I don't want to go into a spec sheet reading uh, necessarily, but it's really good for how small it is. 4K, 200 megabits per second, F-Log, Eterna, good autofocus. I mean, it's funny because just a year or so before this, you had to spend almost twice as much to get all of those brand new features in the X-H1. Basically, this thing does better than it should for video. My X-H1 review and Musubi cooking video were both shot with this, so I really have no complaints on the quality. I'd film this video on it, but I only have one of them. So I've loved on this camera the whole video, and that is all totally how I feel. Um, but just to set the record straight, uh, here's what I don't like about the camera. The ports are too close together that you can't plug a USB cable in with an HDMI cable. The tripod mount is too close to the battery door. Not a big problem when you just gotta take it off a tripod, but when you're on a gimbal, it's a pain. I love the size, but I also have small hands, and I can see some people disliking the grip. And no image stabilization? Ugh. So yeah, it does have things to be desired, but honestly for most people who will be using this camera, most of these things probably won't even matter. And for how cheap these things are, considering all the stuff you are getting, and how tiny it is, I can overlook a lot of that stuff, um, because honestly this isn't a pro camera. It's more of a killer beginner or enthusiast camera, and I don't mean enthusiast like, oh you aren't a pro sort of way, I mean enthusiast like you actually care about cameras and photography for the fun and art of it. Pros want full control and all the features. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. And this camera does give you a lot of it, it's just people are always gonna want more. But this is a camera that you can grow with, learn to shoot with, and for most people and shooting styles, this is not gonna be a limiting factor. Now, I have to be honest, this is just my temporary camera in between my X-H1 breaking and when the X-T4 releases. But man, it is going to be hard to give this thing up. Um, with my budget, I can only keep one new camera, and for work, I need something that has image stabilization. So maybe I'm just a bit hypocritical. Um, but I definitely would love to own another one of these someday. It's just a better version of my old XE2 that I mentioned, uh, which I just keep around nowadays for shooting because it's fun and not worth selling nowadays. If the X-T30 seems like the camera for you, then you probably won't regret it. Um, but if it seems like the camera for you, but you don't have the budget for it, then I would seriously look into the X-T20, the X-T10, or even the X-E2. You won't necessarily get the fastest autofocus or the best video, but everything else I mentioned is still in those. Um, so honestly, if you're just going for the simple photograph experience, then the older bodies are probably the better deal. 
Like I said earlier, the image quality highly depends on what lenses you use. So if you can save money on an older body, then you can put it towards a nicer lens. Right now, a used X-T20 goes for about four to five hundred dollars, while a used X-T10 is only two to three hundred. Now I realize I'm getting a bit off topic from the X-T30, but I guess it's just because I'm not necessarily in love with this specific camera, I'm more in love with the idea and the vibe of it. It's like my X-T2. If you want something with the best specs, then the X-T30 may not necessarily be the best camera, but for most people, this is probably more than enough, uh, especially in this budget. But if you want something that's just fun to shoot and still does have pretty killer specs, then you've probably already settled on a Fujifilm camera. It's more just about which one fits your budget. The Fujifilm X-T30 is in my book a perfect everyday shooter. You can't help but fall in love with it as you use it more and more, and it's great because it's easy to bring with you and keep using. I'm so biased, but hey, if a camera has that sort of effect on someone, then maybe that's a spec worth noting. If you're interested, I'm putting up a behind the scenes video on my second channel. I'll link it in the description and comments. Also, special thanks to Ra Lee for being my first ever patron.